All set down there, guys? Yes. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Danvers Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, if I could ask all of you to uh, silence or turn off any mobile phones or devices so we're not interrupted. Um, I will start by first introducing the board. Uh, down to my right, Jeff Sauer, uh, Becky Kilborn. Our clerk tonight is Ken Scholes, myself, John Bowner as the chairman, Ken Jarvanen next to me, uh, and our two alternates, Kareen Doherty, and we have a new alternate tonight, Katie Hislop, who uh, joins us, and she is also a town meeting member. Welcome, Katie. Uh, from the planning division, we have uh, Georgia Pendergrass and Aaron Henry. Um, we are in um, receipt of some minutes, and uh, they are, we'll, I guess we'll take them one at a time. Uh, we have one dated of August 22nd, uh, 2022. Um, could I get a motion to accept these minutes? So moved. And a second? I'll I'll second. And any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. And the next set of minutes is from September 12th. Uh, could I get a motion, please? So moved to approve the minutes. Any, uh, could I get a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, folks, we, there is an agenda. We are going to jump around a little bit. We have a, a continued uh, case, a withdrawn case, and then we'll um, get to another continued case. Uh, I think I won't bother to go through the process. If we do go out to the public tonight, please keep in mind we're on Davis Cable. Um, identify yourself at the podium, your name, your address, and, um, you know, after uh, we get to the point of Questions that have been completed by the zoning board will come back have a public comment and you will hear deliberations if we get to that point on any of our cases. And with that said, did I cover it all? I think so. Yeah. All right, Mr. Clerk, if we could go with the first withdrawn case. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the first case is 13 Popes Lane. This is highway corridor zoned. Uh, request for a finding in accordance with section 3.10.C of the Danvers zoning bylaw to allow the substitution of a non -con new non-conforming use in place of the existing residential non-conforming use to allow the use of property for industrial warehouse purposes and to the extent necessary a request for a use variance from table one of the Danvers zoning bylaw to allow the construction of a fully conforming industrial warehouse building containing 32,000 square feet in the highway corridor zone Request is made by Huntington Development LLC, care of Nancy McCann, Esquire. Docket 22-4989. Mr. Chair, we are in receipt of a letter from McCann and McCann attorneys. Um, on behalf of the applicant, uh, we request to leave to withdraw without prejudice the above reference application filed July 14, 2022, and pending before the Board of Appeals. Signed, Nancy McCann. Okay, I have a motion to withdraw. Can I get one, please? So moved. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next. The next case is 48 Crane Brook Drive, also highway corridor zone. Uh, request for a use variance from Table 1 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaw to allow the use of an existing property to change from extended stay hotel to multifamily rental apartment. Uh, request for a dimensional variance from Section 10 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaw to allow a re reduction in the number of parking spaces for the proposed multiple multi-use family use uh, request made by Peg Boston Danvers Property LLC, docket 22-4992. I think we have a letter, right? We have a letter from Mc also from McCann and Mc McCann. Um, on behalf of Peg Boston Properties, applicant and owner of the property located at 48 Cranebrook Drive, I request a continuance without discussion of the pending matter from the board's meeting of October 17th to the November 14th meeting to allow the applicant time to address parking concern. Also signed by Nancy McCann. Um, before I get a motion on that, uh, Georgia, do we have any cases scheduled for the 14th currently? <coughs> for November 14th? Yes. Um, that, I believe there was one case. Okay. Okay, so I have a motion to continue this to November 14th. Uh, could I get a motion, sorry? 
Uh, so moved to continue to the November 14th. And I will second. And a second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right. And uh, let's go to our continued case. Okay. Uh, next case is 42 Summer Street. This is zoned R2. Request for a dimensional variance from Table 2 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaw to allow the creation of a new single family house, house lot with 8,636 square feet of land area where 20,000 square feet is required. Request is made by Danvers MC Owner LLC and Gambrell LLC, docket 22-4990. And I'm um, sorry, Attorney McCann, just one second. So uh, uh, zoning board members, you were all in receipt of an updated plan that came out to us Saturday. Um, have we all feel we've had enough time to review this? Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. Um, go ahead, good evening. Thank you very much. My name is Nancy McCann. I'm here on behalf of the applicant Gambrell LLC. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you also want to open the other hearing that is uh, associated with this as well, which is actually a continued hearing? I, I do not. I think we're okay. going to go and see how we do on the variance, and then we'll press forward if that okay. goes forward. All right. Um, we appeared before the board um, with regard to this entire project back in July. Uh, and we did make a full presentation. We did discuss this lot area variance at that time, as well as discussing the special permit and finding requested for the, uh, the nursing home addition that's being proposed. And uh, at that time, the variance for the lot area had not been advertised, although it was part of the, uh, the same entire package that was filed with the board back in June. Um, since that time, uh, we've uh, addressed quite a number of things that came up during the course of that meeting. Um, we addressed uh, landscaping concerns immediately, and that related to the, exist, uh, the existing condition then of 42 Summer Street um, and the fact that that property over a course of a number of years had become very overgrown and there were comments made as to whether the applicant could take some steps to correct that, uh, that overgrown situation that while was uh, not the applicant's uh, doing over a period of years, the applicant is the, now the owner of the property and could the applicant take steps to correct that. And in fact, the applicant did and spent some $6,000 to uh, trim back and address the, the landscaping on that property and has had regular mowing occurring since that time. There were also uh, questions with regard to operational issues on 44 Summer Street that the applicant took steps immediately to address with a staff meeting within days of that, uh, that June meeting uh, before you and uh, subsequent memos and follow up with staff to address those concerns. Uh, namely uh, some music and, and loud uh, noises and things that uh, coming from staff as they come and go and went out on their breaks as well as smoking um, issues and, and the like. And I can go into those in more detail when we get to the special permit uh, request. But the applicant did listen to the concerns that were stated and took uh, some immediate action. Um, the applicant also met with the Preservation Commission because, again, the, um, the lot variance was not technically discussed during that meeting due to the advertising, but it was, in fact, discussed. And there were some comments made about um, the, uh, the size of the lot and that sort of thing. So uh, the applicant did meet with the Preservation Commission since we last met, as well as the Historic District Commission. And both of those um, meetings and meetings with those two commissions were done uh, for the purpose of attempting to determine options for preservation of the structure that's located on the lot at 42 Summer Street. And this directly relates to our request for a variance. We filed our application with you that's, that's pending now, uh, again, at the end of June, requesting a lot area variance to create a lot of uh, 8,636 uh, square feet on which the historic dwelling would be placed. Um, 
originally this applicant had uh, approached the Preservation Commission uh, to allow the demolition of that structure. It had been vacant for a number of years. It had fallen into disrepair. So uh, prior to filing the initial application with you, uh, the applicant met with the Preservation Commission and it was determined that this was a historic structure. So um, the applicant took steps to attempt to design the project such that this, the structure could be, um, could be saved. And the applicant proposed to save the dwelling on a lot of 8,636 square feet. Um, while still meeting the needs uh, by creating a parcel B to be added on to 44 Summer Street for the uh, nursing home expansion. We filed that ZBA application. We met with the Preservation Commission in September, and the Preservation Commission voted in a three to one vote to support and to send to you a letter of support for the lot area variance requested initially of 8,636 square feet. Uh, there was one vote uh, in opposition to that, and the reasons uh, I believe that were given at that time at the Preservation Commission was that the lot proposed was not big enough, that the 8,636 square feet was not big enough. But the vote did carry, and you do have a letter of support from the Preservation Commission in your packet um, supporting our request for a lot area variant. The applicant then went forward meeting with the Historic District Commission regarding uh, the proposal to create a lot for um, the preservation of the dwelling as well as to discuss with the Historic District Commission its initiative to create a historic district uh, over this particular parcel. And through that process and based on the comments that we received and the comment received from the one dissenting vote at the Preservation Commission, the lot area variance request has been revised from 8,636 square feet to what's before you this evening, which is this plan showing the division of the lot and creating a lot for the historic dwelling of 12,123 square feet. This is an R2 zoning district, which requires 20,000 square feet for a dwelling lot, and we are proposing 12,123 uh, square feet, which is in excess of 50% of the required um, lot area, which is um, of often um, importance to the board when it renders decisions with regard to variances. But more importantly, this proposal and the revised plan that we've submitted to you is a 40% increase over what the original proposal was. So we went from 8,636 square feet to our proposal of 12,123 square feet, um, which again is a 40% increase. Last week on October 13th, we met with the uh, Historic District Commission and we presented the lot variance application with the revised plan, as you see tonight, 12,123 square feet and the Historic uh, District Commission voted to support uh, the lot area variance and in fact has sent a letter to you uh, evidencing that support uh, for the lot area variance which will allow the saving of the historic dwelling on its own lot. Um, a, uh, the president of the Danvers Historical Society was also at that meeting last week and you do have a letter from the uh, Danvers Historical Society supporting um, that the lot area variance that you see before you tonight, and um, which will allow, again, the remainder of the lot to go to 44 Summer Street for the nursing home uh, project. Um, so why did the Preservation Commission the Historic District Commission and the Danvers Historical Society all vote to support the lot area variance. 
Well, the reason is, and it's stated in, in the letters, and specifically the letter from the um, Danvers Historic District Commission, that the structure at 42 Summer Street is, and I'll use their terms, nationally sig a nationally significant historic house. That is a unique feature of this property. It is truly unique. Um, there are uh, very few, as the Historic District Commission members will tell you, very few first period homes left in the entire country. And this is one that's, that's been deemed by the Historic District Commission as nationally significant historic house. Um, and that's the basis for our variance. Under 40A section 10, there has to be a unique condition affecting soil condition, shape, or topography of the land or the structure thereon. And that's specifically stated in, in 40A section 10. This is a structure on this lot which is absolutely unique. There is no other um, similarly situated um, dwelling of that historic significance as the town archivist will tell you um, in this town and perhaps in the country. Um, that is the basis for, the, for a variance under 40A section 10. It meets that requirement and, um, and that is the basis for our variance. We also have in Danvers the demo delay bylaw that encourages and in fact urges the preservation of historic structures. And bylaws should work together and they should work in concert. And what we have done here is worked those not only the bylaws together, but we've worked together with the commissions um, to create a lot which falls under the general guidelines that this board uses for, for issuing variances. We need only one variance, and that is the lot area variance. And um, this is a unique structure. And a unique structure under 40A section 10 is grounds for the granting of a variance. And this proposal will allow not only the preservation of the historic structure, but then will allow um, the entire project, which again, as we filed this, we filed this as an entire project, the lot area variance, as well as uh, the special permit and finding for, um, the, uh, for the nursing home that's, that's being proposed, which itself is a permitted use. It is a permitted use in this zoning district. It is permitted by special permit. It is not, uh, it does not need a variance. The only variance that's required here is a lot area variance. And you will notice that um, the setback requirements, both for the existing dwelling as well as for uh, the proposed nursing home uh, meet the uh, setback requirements as they relate to the new lot line that's being proposed. Um, special permit, again, uh, we'll go into that in more detail, but we also meet all of the criteria for the granting of the special permit. All right, well, I wanted to stick to the variance right, right. now. So, um, <clears throat> so that is the, the application as it relates to the, um, to the variance, um, I have, and you have before you, I think in your packages, the original request for 86,000, um, sorry, 8,636 square feet, and then the revision based on comments that we heard um, as we went through this process, and the application that's before you is 12,143 square feet, um, and we would be happy to answer any questions. I will um, read into the record, if you wish, the uh, letters from the Preservation Commission, the um, Historic District Commission, and the Historic Society. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I can do that, or if you, um, your clerk well, think, is going I to do that. I think you did that. a good job to summarize them. I think I'm Thank imagining you. they're both very similar. Uh, all three are somewhat uh, similar, but all three um, also specifically point out the uniqueness of this, uh, this historic structure. I, th I think this board's very aware of that at this point, so. 
I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay. The applicant is here with me tonight, Brendan Mellon, um, and he is uh, prepared to any, ask, answer any questions also. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you. Um, Georgia, could you, can you blow that up um, for us? So, uh, uh, Attorney McCann, before I turn it over to the board, um, so by my quick math here, it looks like you increased the lot size um, by about 3,500 square feet. So how did you arrive at that number and, and what changed from what you first presented to today? I think I have to Please. take this with me. Uh, so what we did um, in order to increase the lot size is kind of is, is somewhat twofold. Uh, the benefits of it, but the original um, 8,600 square feet roughly had a lot line approximately, I just want to make sure that I point it out um, correctly, approximately here. So we created a rectangular lot about to here, right about the edge of the concrete driveway roughly. And that was 8,600 square feet. It's probably closer to here, actually. Um, and then we increased that by about 40 percent by drawing the line. Rather than having it come across here, we took it all the way down. And so the entire existing frontage for 42 Summer Street will remain with 42 Summer Street. Previously, we were proposing to divide the lot such that a portion of the existing 42 Summer Street would go with 42 Summer Street and the remainder would uh, go with Parcel B. But the revision carries the this dividing lot line all the way down and leaves the entire frontage of 42 Summer Street with 42 Summer Street. And the benefit of that, carrying this down, carrying it through here, is, um, is in, enhances the remainder of the streetscape. So it kind of is twofold, but that was the change. Okay, so before it kind of divided that driveway, and now you've basically carried it all the way down to, um, I guess, the next address on summer. Correct. Okay. All right, I will turn it over to the board. Uh, board members, I'll remind you, no comments at this time. Um, just keep your um, statements to questions. And Jeff, we'll start with you. Uh, thank you. Attorney McCann, what are the legal implications of that driveway crossing over there? The legal implications of the driveway. There will be an easement for that driveway. And there's, um, there's no plan to move that off of that property? That is a proposed driveway. Um, and that would remain uh, as part of, of the plan. It would simply be an easement to, uh, to the back area. Um, and that was also discussed at the historic uh, district commission meeting um, that should a um, historic district be uh, developed and, and approved over the new 12,000 square foot lot um, that that it's understood that there would be a driveway there and that would not be prohibited. So it would be an easement. All right, thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you, Jeff. Becky. Um, just two questions. One, I mean, there's no doubt that it's better to have 12,000 than 8,000 with this house. So um, that being said, can you, and obviously the residential two zoning is 20,000 square foot minimum lot size. So can you give me an idea of that area? Have you kind of looked at the house lots in that area and up and down that street? Are they typically 10,000, 15,000, 20,000? Um, because we know that uh, there's a lot of lots in Danvers that are under 10,000 and even 10,000, so. Um. Sure, there, there are. In this neighborhood, I think they're generally 20,000. Okay, okay. And then I just. And, uh, and I guess I would say that because this is generally a newer neighborhood. Okay. Right? Okay. You look at historic homes. Yes. And historic homes generally are on smaller lots. Right. 
But Summer Street has been there a long time. Mm -hmm. So up and down Summer Street may, might be different. That's yeah, the, but the homes are generally newer okay. vintage. Okay. Yeah, they've, they've and then I have just a minute. Yep. No, I was, I was reaffirming what Attorney McCann said. <laughs> <laughs> Those lots aren't typically old sized, if anything. Okay. All right. So um, can you go through the planning board? You went in front of the planning board with regard to this lot, right? We were, I'm a little yes. confused, and we, I know that we had some confusion in the beginning as to how this was supposed to be presented. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I'll be happy to discuss that and give you my opinion on it. Okay. Um, I filed the application requesting everything, the variance and the special permit and the finding. Um, with us. With you. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that was the correct approach. Okay. The um, then planning director was of the opinion that we needed to go to the planning board for an A and R endorsement, creating the 8,636 square foot lot before you approved it. So that was odd to me. Okay. Um, I don't think it's correct. I'll say that. But we did it. We went ahead and did it. So the, the planning board endorsed. The 8,000. The 8,000. Okay. And by endorsement under the A&R process, they're simply saying it has frontage. That really w is what the A&R process so the is all about. Required, it has sufficient frontage. Yeah. It, it had the required frontage of the R2 zoning. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, but now, should you grant this variance, we will have to go back. To the planning board with a new A and R okay. with the 12,100 square feet. Um, I think that was an unusual step to require the applicant to do before the variance for it was granted. But in the interest of time, we proceeded All that right. way. So I just was trying to understand the back and forth. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's it. That's it. Okay, Ken. Um, I don't have any questions. I'll wait for comments. Thank you, Ken. And Ken. Um, what was the original lot size uh, before you asked for the 8,600 square feet or, or whatever? What is the lot size of 42 Summer Street now? Yes. Uh, 37,725 square feet. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I guess that's it. So th that other, um, sorry, that other driveway in the middle you don't need an easement for that because sort of they're just going to use that for parking and not go all the way through to the other that's correct sorry okay thanks that's it Ken. yep uh kareen i have a couple questions i am looking at the two plans and you have the new one that has the new dimensions for the proposed lot and the old plan actually has where the new addition is going to be situated on the lot. I don't see that on the new plan. Is it because you haven't um, uh, like drawn out where it's gonna be based on the new lot size? Or is it gonna be in the exact same spot? It's just not drawn on this new plan. The, the latter. It is going to be in the same spot as, as shown on um, the plan that was submitted with the special permit application. So the location of the addition is going to be the same, meeting the setback requirements to, um, to the new lot. Uh, we just yeah. simply didn't um, place the addition on just this revised lot area plan. Well, I'm looking at the two plans. Mm -hmm. And it looks as if that building, if it's going to be in the same spot, even though it might just be my eyes playing tricks, it looks like it's gonna be pretty close to the lot line. Do you know what the, the, set, the setback of that building will be based on the new dimensions? Yeah, it'll be the same. It'll be about 15.2 feet. It's 15.2 mm -hmm. Okay. Corrine, we have that plan. Right there in your right hand. Okay. Your right hand. That shows the new building. 
a new addition, I should say. Okay. I, I, I thought this was the old plan? No. Okay. And it says 15.2 feet. Yeah. Okay. 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 That was my question. Thank you, Kareen. And uh, Katie? I have no questions. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Attorney McCann, so it's a 37,000 square foot lot. Why not uh, keep 42 Summer Street at a conforming Res 2 lot of 20,000 and 12,000, or I'm sorry, 17,000 to um, 44 Summer? And then you don't even need the variance. It would not give enough area for the uh, nursing home. And what we would then do, which was the initial proposal, was to demolish 40, the dwelling at 42 Summer Street, add the two lots together, and I don't need a variance. I need a variance because we're trying to save the dwelling. That's why I need a variance because this is All right, is so a this 3,500 square feet you're giving us, it really has zero effect on what you're proposing to build as far as size and scope. Yes, that's true. Okay. All right. Um, and I think I've got the, uh, the kind of the timeline. I think we've all been through it and the steps you have taken with the various boards. Um, and I think that's all I have for questions. I'll go back to the board if there's any additional questions before I send it out to the public. I just, I just yeah, go ahead, Becky. I, I just want to confirm um, that you're meeting the setbacks for the rear setback and the side setback. The side setback, uh, that side set. It's 15. Okay. Uh, we're meeting the setbacks for the new the lot line, okay? So the new lot would be the rear setback. We will certainly meet the side setback because okay. it goes some 100 feet. This set side setback is not changing. It's non-conforming. It is okay. what it is now. Okay. And the front, obviously, it's on front the street. Front setback, it's on the street, yeah. and that's not changing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Becky. Anyone else? All right, I'll go out to the public. I'll remind the public that we are just uh, hearing the variance, uh, variance piece of this application. So this is strictly questions or comments to do with what the applicant is proposing as far as splitting the lot. Uh, anybody from the public wish to be heard? Yes. And please direct your questions through the chair. Hi, my name is Marianne Owen. I work at, I'm, I live at 36 Summer Street, so I am the house that's directly next to the 42 Summer Street. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that I don't think that they should qualify for a variance um, because they don't qualify for a legitimate hardship. Based on my understanding, the needs need to be, uh, as she had said, was the soil, the shape of the piece of the property, or the topography? Topography. Sorry, I'm so nervous. I apologize. That's okay. Take your time. Um, it is also my understanding that it has to be a unique flaw to the property, and that it should not be for financial reasons. I find it despicable that she is using the uniqueness of this historic structure to get around a legal requirement. Um, I don't think that this is a, a valid reason for a variance. Um, there are other reasons that I think that it shouldn't be uh, approved is that um, I did my own little research and um, I found from July 26, 2002 to July 26 of 2022 that there were 159 911 calls and responses, which is about every other day in my neighborhood that a police car, an ambulance, and a fire truck with lights go by my house. Um, and it's very uh, disruptive. I'm not 
um, saying that that shouldn't happen, but I'm saying that an expansion to a nursing home, adding a nursing home on top of that is incredibly disruptive to this neighborhood. Um, there are six nursing homes in the town of Danvers already. There are over 530 beds available to people that yeah. need, um, I believe I, this I is just my wanna, Again, we're just talking about the merits of the variance right now, which is just the splitting of this lot. Okay, so I guess. Um, I, I take it you're not in favor of this. I'm not in favor of it. I okay. think that it's, it's a um, huge invasive addition to where I would, where I am. So that entire addition would We're not look over. We're talking about the nursing okay. home at all right yep, now. Yeah, just talking about land just right now. All right, fine. Thank and you, you are direct about it at 36, correct? Um, uh, two houses so down? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, there's a driveway in between. Very good. I mean, how does she feel about the historical building? That's really what yeah. the question is. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, you, you're, you're see, you see what we're faced with here. I think if this property weren't historical, um, it, it may be a different discussion. We're here just strictly to look at the variance piece of it, right now anyway, as this first application. So we're uh, looking at the merits of what's required in Res 2, which is a 20,000 square foot lot. They're proposing a 12,000 square foot lot. I mean, living on right next to that property, it's, that house is right on top of um, the street. I mean, there's not even enough room for a, drive, uh, a walkway mm -hmm. safely, um, you know, because St. John's prep traffic come down and, and, and the traffic is consistent on Summer Street. Yeah. So um, having, splitting the lot and having the land chopped in half, you're, you're not giving the house any ability to resale. Is she in favor of demolition? No, absolutely okay. not. If they don't get the variance, chances are that's what's gonna happen. You heard Attorney McCann say that. All right, all right, okay. Uh, so you have any other I, comments I, or I'm questions? I'm sorry, but I, I, I find that very threatening. Uh, yeah. You asked me my opinion. Yeah. Well, um, we, we seek not, public comment. Yeah, well, and I should be able to say that without being told then that, well, if, I, if they don't get their way, then they're going to tear down. Well, we're not telling you that. He, well, that's. He just said that to me. <laughs> so. I said chances are that could happen. Legally, they have the they right. Own it. They, they own it. They have that right. right. To do that. Okay. So let's All right. Move on. Thank you. Thank you. Additional public comment. Uh, Can I um, yeah, sure. Thanks. Careful. Careful. Watch those wires, too. <laughs> I just wanted to respond to the comment that the, the argument that I made was was despicable, and I and what I just handed the chair is um, Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A Section 10, um, and the uh, the criteria for a variance, um, and it is not limited to soil condition, shape, or topography. In fact, the statute says, owing to circumstances relating to the soil conditions, shape, or topography of the land or structures and affecting and especially affecting such land or structures but not affecting generally the zoning district and this is a unique structure and if the legislature did not intend for unique structures to be considered the term or structures would not be in this statute twice thank you Aaron. Thank you. Yeah, Aaron, could you uh, weigh in on that? I would first of all I just want to know what you were handed. Because uh, this is a, it looks like a general. Yeah, this is 40A section 10. Yeah, 40A um, section 10. I would just, in my, expert, my experience, 19 years this September in land use permitting, I guess I, I would like to have more than, the statute says a lot of things 
uh, there's several other sections that also talk about stuff like this. I would, I'd, I'd like to see a case law where, I, again, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm not aware of a controlling court making a decision, a black letter law decision. Based on a structure. Structures. Okay. Not saying it doesn't exist, but right. that's. Understood, okay. I understand what the statute says. I also know what case law has said about variances and our job is to counsel them and I would, if there's case law that supports that argument, I would like a chance see to, it. to It's see a legal that. issue. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're trying to keep this from becoming a legal issue, right? We're trying to make a good informed decision right. this evening. So, uh, additional public comment. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. My name is Jen Lovell and I live at 43 Summer Street, right across the street from 42. Hi, Jen. Um, and our lot is just under 40,000 square feet, so, and I feel like a lot of the houses in the neighborhood are as well, good sized lots, so, you know, I, I mean, I can address some of the things that she said too about the landscape and being taken care of, but I'm not sure if this is the time or not. Well, she brought it up and I think it's worthy as, as someone who uh, lives across the street and looks at it, I know Again, I, not to defend the applicant, but I do understand they only purchased in January, I believe. It was brought to their attention, and they have attempted to address it. Now, right. Right. I it's know been uh, things can get, get, get lost in translation, but uh, yeah, certainly uh, would like to hear from you as a neighbor. Yeah, I think it took them a while because my husband, as well as some of the other neighbors, would go over and you know mow it just so that people walking by on the sidewalk could... Um, see that in, in order to get to the nursing home coming one way you have to pass that so there's no way they didn't see that and just having that pride of I own this property I should take care of it to you know be a good neighbor it wasn't it didn't happen until we brought it to their attention you know people going by with strollers kids on bikes can't really go by if it's overgrown and on my side there is no sidewalk so just some of those issues that were um, concerning to us as well um, and I know that some of the other issues that we brought up were um, addressed but I am my husband and I are definitely against splitting the lot. We would like to see the house saved. We'd like to obviously see nothing happen to the property. We don't want to look out and see, you know, what the, their plans um, to extend the nursing home. It's like Marianne said, the police, fire, ambulance go through all the time, and adding 30 units would, Can you, cut you know, this off, please. Well, uh, expanding uh, that. Um, and what about the other uh, things that were? Uh, brought up have they been addressed as uh, the applicant has indicated tonight um, I haven't seen anyone out there smoking um, okay. again it's you no know, it's not summertime anymore so that was one of the big concerns that I saw uh, my neighbor who lives next to me right on the corner right across from the nursing home as it is wasn't able to come tonight she's sick so she's I think I believe she's watching on TV but um, you know she would obviously be able to speak more to that as well okay but they haven't been back that I've noticed it since they've landscaped, so. And so you're not in favor of the variance? No. Okay, very good, thank you. And I have more to say there. <laughs> uh, anyone else from the public who would like to speak on 42? Yes, Mr. Bradstreet. New comments, I hope. I think we have somebody, somebody online, too. <clears throat> oh, yeah, well, go ahead, Mr. Oh, Bradstreet, no, I'll take you now. They're just watching. Is there someone online as well? No, uh, they're just watching, I guess. Okay. Uh, they don't they're just watching, okay. Bill Bradstreet, town meeting member, precinct one. Would you be setting a bad precedent by changing the dimensions of lot sizes in this area if you go from 20 to, uh, was it eight? To oh. 12. Uh, no, no case sets a precedent. We, we look at each case individually, so. Okay, so if several cases. We have a, a guideline by town bylaws that we follow and attempt to follow, you know, honestly, um, if everything was done by bylaw, there would be no need for the zoning board. There wouldn't be any variances granted at all. So Here we go. that's where we come in, is to try to make sense of it. Here we go. I'm not in favor of uh, what's being proposed, obviously. I don't live next to this lot, but what's stated here and what's been spoken, I'm not in favor of a variance for this. This split, okay. I'm not a member of the board. Yep. If I were, you would know it, but I'm not in favor. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bradstreet. Any other publics from the uh, public comment? Yes, go ahead. 
Hi, I'm Gail Eaton. I live at 42 Summer Street. I live behind the nursing home. Um, and I think on one of, you can see our names, the driveway. That I'm sorry, did you say 42? 40, we live at 40, I'm sorry, I live at 40 Summer okay, Street. Okay, you confused sorry. me there. I thought Everybody you lived in the memory Everybody gets nervous when they get up here. Okay. Um, yeah, we had friends that lived there. Um, is there any, um, what's the decision on if this goes forward as far as the plan to sell the property, uh, the 42 Summer Street? Is it the intent of the current owners to sell it? I, or I believe the, that's the case, but I'll allow you to respond Or to are that. they giving it to the town of Danvers, or is the intent to sell? Because my question with that is, you know, it took us bringing up the conditions of the grounds to begin with to get the grass cut and everything, which was pretty obvious. Sure. You know, that you could, anybody driving by, like, <clears throat> what's that? You know, haunted house. And, um, you know, so we mentioned it, and as um, Ms. McCann said, it did get addressed. But, you know, looking at it now, the gutters are filled with plants and dirt and everything, and you know, to me, a show of good faith, and if you cared about the house or understood the significance of it, that you would, you know, we better get this stuff out of the gutters. I'm sure all of you are pulling leaves and stuff out now for obvious reasons. So to me, that's just going to enhance the deterioration of what some people feel is a mess already, yet other people like Richard Tress feel it's a very sal salvageable property. So. I guess my question is, if you care about the property, you want to sell it, you would kind of keep it in as good condition, given the condition that it's in. So I'm just curious about going forward, if this gets you know, cut up and how that's going to go, you know, are they going to just mow it down anyhow? You know, that was my question way back when. Okay. Uh, Attorney McCann, you want to respond? If the lot area is, it, variance is granted and the special permit is granted as, to make the project as, as we've presented to you, then the intent is to uh, sell 42 Summer Street um, for a single family residence and have that building be restored. So you will do no restoration at all? You will just look to sell it? Uh, not necessarily. No, but the building will be restored and part of that or all of that may be done by the applicant or it may be done by, um, by someone who wants to buy it and is uh, well equipped to do that sort of, uh, of restoration. The applicant has already retained an architect who is an historic, um, arch not a historic architect, but an architect of historic buildings and is well um, well versed, he appeared actually at the historic district commission meeting, um, and uh, so the applicant is already looking into what will need to be done. Um, when the variance is granted and the special permit is granted to restore that home, and the applicant may do that, or the applicant may sell it to someone who is going to to do that. But the well, to the to this lady's point. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what about like stuff as simple as gutters and stuff? I mean, I would think you'd want to protect that uh, property if if that's the intent to, to sell it. I mean, you guys aren't this old house. You're in the right. memory care business, uh, right. nursing home business. You're not in the house restoration business. So why why is it getting to this point, I guess? Well, I'm going to let uh, Brendan answer that, but I will say it didn't get to this point since January of this year. Mm -hmm. This property has been deteriorating and ignored for five years, 10 years, whatever. It's been quite a while. It's been vacant for a number of years. And so it didn't get to this point just, to, just because of this, uh, this applicant. Mm -hmm. The applicant has actually undertaken to do some things uh, and has, has retained an architect who specializes 
in this type of type of building. But I'm going to let Brendan speak to that. Brendan Mallon, uh, Gambrell LLC. So with respect to some of the, the things they brought up, we'll, I think as most of the neighbors can attest at 44 Summer Street, we spend an expansive amount on landscaping and we upkeep it all the time. So as a standard practice, we wouldn't do that to any property that we owned. I mean, this one, we, we had a lot of paperwork and legal stuff going on. So right when it was brought up, we addressed it and we took care of the, <clears throat> the initial visual uh, landscaping that needs to be done. It is on regular schedule with maintenance. It is also on schedule to be addressed during our fall cleanup of the building, which the fall cleanup of the building will include a heavy cleanup of leaves and, and outside debris, and we can absolutely add the gutters and stuff onto that. So our, our intent while we go through this process and determine if we would restore it or not is to restore the elements that we need to at a minimum to keep it you know, at, at general maintenance, right? But we're not going to go put, you know, a substantial change to it and have, yeah, I think, I, I Dick, understood. Dick Trask yeah. educated us on that buyers are very unique in this space. Mm -hmm. and, and he really wanted to see somebody that is passionate about owning a historical home purchase it to the point that he was willing to write letters to put a kind of an all call out. So we were going to balance how much we do relative to what somebody else would want to do. We don't want to see someone not like what we did and then rip it out and then that's just wasted you know that's just waste in general right so yes we can uh, we can agree that we will go around we'll clean the yards if if the gutters are an issue we'll, we'll take care of the gutters anything that's visually that needs maintenance will happen with our fall cleanup of the building next door and we'll do it at the same time okay thank you did you have additional questions or comment yes no sorry uh here were you done i was just letting her respond to your question I would just have the question, now what would stop somebody else purchasing, Brendan, from you, the house, and then they want to knock it down? I mean, through, could through we... Through the chair, up here. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, would, you know, would, what would stop somebody else from purchasing it and knocking it down? I mean, would you go through the same thing again? I, you know... Uh, well, I'll go out to town staff on that. I guess that's actually a good question. So if... Uh, what's that? After 12 months, I can tear it down. Yeah, so the, they're under a 12-month window right now, this applicant. But I guess my question would be, if it were to be sold, does that process restart, or are, do they inherit that 12-month window? I believe the permit is transferable. Okay. But there was talk, and I'm, I'm not sure if Attorney McCann wants to address that, at the HDC meeting on October 13th, this possibility was discussed so I, I I don't want to speak for them yep. for what they offered but that that scenario was addressed and the and attorney McCann may want to say yeah could you address that attorney McCann I didn't mean to say she by the way <laughs> sorry <coughs> so the question is if if this were sold by your applicant mm -hmm. minimal renovations or none what happens to the uh, one month uh, demolition delay? The one year? The one, sorry. The, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now the one I'm year getting demolition tripped up. Delay. Yes, the one what year. What we represented to the Historic District Commission is if the variance is granted and the special permit is granted and this project is approved, we would withdraw the demolition permit. And therefore, anybody who would want to uh, demolish it in the future, if that ever were to come to pass, they would have to go through the demolition delay bylaw process under the Preservation Commission, which would no doubt impose another one-year delay um, on it. So that was but the representation. But you would withdraw not through this board. You'd be withdrawing through the Preservation Commission. That actually through the building inspector's office, we withdraw, would withdraw. Okay. Uh, and we would advise the Preservation Commission that we have withdrawn that application. Okay. So um, the, the intent absolutely is for this property to be preserved and uh, sold to someone who wants to uh, continue its restoration and, uh, and have it remain. But sometime, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, somebody 
wants to demolish this building, there is a process. Sure. And but we <clears throat> would withdraw that uh, demolition permit um, so that we are giving up any rights to demolish after a year um, that would go along with the decision that's already been made by the Preservation Commission. And, and I take it you would take that as a condition? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other additional uh, public comment? Uh, Uh, yeah, you can continue. Yeah, questions, please. I just is that something that would be in writing? You know, yes, that's legal, what I just. So, yeah, just that would so by be. By me asking. Yeah, it's not just saying they're no, saying it's it. not a handshake. It's right. It's um, it would be in writing as a. Yeah, condition. so they would take it as a condition if the board were to grant the variance that they would withdraw their request for a demolition permit. And then, in other words, like the future, somebody that purchased it They'd would know up front. They'd have to start all over again. Because it, it seemed like at the beginning that there wasn't a lot of research done about the property that they were purchasing because it was a very swift well, sale. The, the, there wasn't a lot of research by the applicant, but the Preservation Commission was very aware about uh, the history on the property, and that's when the applicant became aware of it. Right, right. Yeah. Because it was a quick... Yep. type of thing okay do you have any and I take it you are or aren't in favor I've uh, come to the microphone please we're on the cable <laughs> um, this, this is some new information that I'm just getting tonight as far as the size of the lot the we're, we're all getting it you know we didn't get any letters from the historical commission right we never got so we don't know who was in favor who wasn't in favor we never saw any of those mm -hmm. um, letters or anything, which I guess just go to you. But so some of this stuff is brand new. So I'm pondering it as we're going back and forth here right now. OK, thank you. I just wanted to add something to, I think, benefits the whole conversation. We also agreed in the historic district meeting that pending the approval of these two, we're actually going to show up, not only withdraw the application, we're actually going to show up and support of the as the owner of the uh, single purpose historic district that they would draw around the new property if it goes to town meeting and we would not sell the house until that town meeting is heard so that would assuming it gets approved at town meeting that then puts a historic district around the new parcel and prevents the new owner from pulling a delayed demo because now they're under the restriction of that new single purpose district gotcha so just thank you yep. All right, additional public comment, new comments only. I'll, I'll let Mr. Brad see if it's quick. Go ahead. Uh, after the mic, no. <laughs> you, you, I'll close on you. Again, Bill Brad Street Town Meeting Member Precinct 1. At my age, I'm aware that some things take a lot of time to be accomplished. A lot of time. Mm -hmm. If someone that were to purchase this house, and if it doesn't, the role, the uh, role doesn't pass the town, someone could, whoever they might be, as a favor or whatever, knock the house down, turn it into a nice grass plot of land. Is that possible? It, it is. All it right. is. Well, that would be a big concern of mine. Yep. Again, it's, it's not going to happen right yesterday. Now. It's Ever. not going to happen yesterday. It's not going to happen tomorrow. But it could happen in the future. Correct. I am concerned with the future. Mine's not that great, but some people, the future is yeah. a uh, lot greater. Understood. Again, again, I'm not in favor of this for yep. different reasons. This, that's one of them. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna close the public comments now. Um, oh, sorry, yep. Yep, last, last one. My name's Doug DeRocher, I live at Six Greenleaf. Um, I'm also on the Historic Commission Board. I was a dissenting vote. I was not in favor of this. Um, I appreciate the fact that they wanna save the property. Um, I think it's mainly for business reasons. And I appreciate that. So that's one good thing about this. Um, uh, the project itself, I think it's, you know, kind of sacrificing the neighborhood. 
the main reason why I did not vote in favor of it is because I think uh, my neighbors, my family, my friends, we're all gonna pay a heavy price. Um, I did submit a letter a month or two ago. Um, I've had rat problems in my backyard uh, where just dead corpses have shown up. Um, and I believe it's because of the dumpsters. Uh, I never had an issue before. I've been there for 13 years. Um, I think bigger dumpsters that are fuller uh, are just gonna bring the issue and, and make it worse. Um, and I don't think it's good for the neighborhood. Uh, I don't think we deserve it. Uh, I'm sure most of us move there because we love the neighborhood. Again, Mr. Drosha, we gotta keep it to the variance piece of this, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just felt like I needed to say my part. Uh, I think the project in general is going to be a big detriment to the neighborhood. And you are, you're on the Historic Commission? That's correct. And you voted against this? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I will close the public hearing now. Um, and uh, do you like to sum up or I will ask the board to deliberate this application? I have actually one additional question. Uh, Attorney McCann, just before you go, um, Mr. Scholes has an additional question for uh, you. Mr. Chairman, through you. Uh, uh, Attorney McCann, point of clarification, when you said you're gonna withdraw the uh, demolition permit, but you're only gonna do that if this whole project is, not just the variance, but the whole project is approved, correct? And then yes, you this, withdraw the? Yes, this permit. is one application. So if you get the variance, that doesn't mean you're gonna withdraw the destruction permit demolition permit this is an entire project and it requires a variance a special permit and a finding to, to realize that okay. that's that's right and the reason we need the variance since we're talking about the variance now the only reason we need the variance is we are attempting to meet the desires of the town to retain the historic structure and the original process that this applicant went through if we did not save that historic structure, we would not be seeking a variance. But in listening to the town departments, the comments heard before this board, uh, the comments and what we learned during the Preservation Commission process, which was a, a very informative process, and I have to say, the Preservation Commission process, the demo delay proce uh, bylaw process, worked exactly the way it's supposed to in this particular instance. We proposed to demolish the building. We went through the process, and if we had, we wouldn't have needed the variance. We went through the process. We heard what the Preservation Commission had to say. They imposed the delay, and the purpose of the delay under the demolition delay bylaw is not to just waste time specifically states in the demolition delay bylaw that the purpose of that delay is to encourage the applicant to find a way to save the structure. And that's exactly what the applicant did here. And that option, the way to save the structure, requires the variance. And that's why we need the variance, to make the, the bylaws and the intents and the purposes of these Various bylaws, the zoning bylaw, the demolition delay bylaw, the Preservation Commission's guidelines, work together, have them work in concert. And what we've done here is exactly that. We've, we've found a way to save the structure. In order to save the structure, we have to get a, use, a lot area variance. Um, we've met all of the other requirements. Uh, setbacks and all of that, but we need the lot area variance in order to do that, um, and that will allow us to, uh, to save that structure, which is the intent of the demolition delay bylaw, the Preservation Commission, as well as, as the zoning bylaw to allow that, uh, that to stay. So that's, that's the reason. It's a unique structure. And the town has, uh, through its various boards, has indicated to us very clearly 
that they want this nationally significant structure to remain. And so we have come up with a way to do that. And we would request the lot area variance to allow that to happen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna start down there with you, Jeff. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, I, I think this is a very difficult case. I mean, the board never likes to move in the direction of more nonconformity. And that's what we have here. We have a perfectly valid 37,000 square foot lot, and we're being asked to force it into nonconformance. Um, to me, it's a hardship of the applicant's own making, uh, and I guess I'm not in favor of it. Thank you, Jeff. Becky. Um, I agree with Jeff that it's a very difficult uh, decision, and um, I find that it's hard to ignore the historic district, uh, this historic commission, the preservation commission, all the people that want this preserved. Um, the letter from the Preservation Commission uh, says specifically that this is one of fewer than 250 per first period dwellings surviving in the country. Um, so I think we have some responsibility to try to preserve it. Um, would I like to see a 20,000 square foot lot? Yes. Um, I would hope that they could get there, but I think that there's been a lot of discussion and planning with other commissions who are much more qualified with regard to this property, and they are feeling comfortable with 12,000 square feet. So I'm gonna vote yes, um, because I think that other people feel this is enough land for this structure and, um, and would allow it to be preserved. So I would vote yes. Thank you, Becky. Ken. Um, boy, I'd hate to see the building get destroyed, bottom line, in, in my book. So I'm going to vote yes on this for two reasons. I don't want to see the building get destroyed. And if it did get destroyed, guess what? You're going to see the, the whole new addition building and not see that dwelling, hopefully, you know, built back to the way it should be. You're going to see a big industrial nursing home. Nothing's going to be there. So I'm going to vote yes on this. Thank you, Ken. And Ken. <clears throat> I'm a no on this because I don't think it reaches the threshold of a real hardship. I think it's really monetary um, by the applicant. And also, there's really nothing that's gonna, that could stop this to get ripped down in a couple of years or something. So I think inevitably, we're at, there's a lot of what ifs. And to take a non-conforming and make another non-conforming, doesn't really make sense. Or take take a, a conforming lot and then make two non-conforming lots. It doesn't make sense, like Jeff was saying. So for me, I'm a no. Thank you, Ken. Kareen. I agree that there are a lot of challenges with this, this particular case. Unfortunately, um, being a member of the zoning board, we can only look at the zoning aspect of this. And I we cannot make a conforming lot non-conforming to save a historical structure. And as much as I would hate to see the structure um, demolished, um, that really isn't our task tonight. So I am a no. Thank you, Corrine. And Katie. Um, similarly, I would, my comment would be that I, um, it, it is, troubling that you would make a um, conforming lot non-conforming. Um, and it, it, if, this, and I, if this variance is approved, um, nothing is going to stop the building from getting torn down if the entire project is not approved. So with, with that in mind, I, I would be a no. Thank you, Katie. Um, I, I agree. Uh, Attorney McCann, with uh, my fellow applicant, I my mean, fellow uh, Sony board members, that you know we're in a tough spot here, and um, our our hat is the zoning board. It's not the historic commission. It's not the preservation commission. Um, we look at zoning. 
uh, I feel like the splitting of this lot down to 12,000 square feet, uh, okay, I, I, I do acknowledge that you gave more space to 40 to Summer Street, but it's, it's, you're creating your own hardship in my estimation, although I, I, I do understand what you pointed out about structures, but for that reason alone, I'm a no. So what would you like to do? You don't have the votes to pass the variance at this point. In response to some of the comments that I heard as you we were going down the line, uh, one thing that was discussed at the um, Preservation Commission meeting, as well as the Historic District Commission meeting, was the applicant's willing to, willingness to put a preservation restriction on, uh, on the dwelling. And we would take that as a condition of the variance so that, um, to Mr. Dervinen's point, um, in a couple of years, someone could not come in and say they wanted to take down the structure. The structure would be preserved uh, on a preservation restriction. Um, that preservation restriction um, actually preserves the structure more uh, than even a historic district would because there are um, in interior elements that can be and would be preserved that are not preserved under a historic district. Um, so the applicant would be, um, would be amenable to a restriction that a preservation restriction would, or a uh, condition, I should say, of the variance that a preservation restriction would be placed on the property. Well, I, uh, all right, I, I can see, um, you know, that you're offering this up now, but we have deliberated. It has been based, uh, from what I understand, mostly on lot size not on whether or not the property would be preserved. Um, and is it, am I accurate with that preservation restriction that would only happen if town meeting votes in favor of that? No, no, it would so have that, nothing to do with town meeting. Be a deed restriction. Yeah, so uh, again, I, I heard from my fellow zoning board members that they're not happy with the split of the land becoming a non-conforming lot. So. I, I, I understand the, the historic piece of it, but, it, but uh, I'm hearing that the no's were because of the size. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah. And the obvious solution for the applicant is to give the house 20,000 square feet and scale down the size of their addition. Yeah, well, that's on them. But right now, you don't have the votes. And they wouldn't have to be here at all. Right. And we talked about that. And they can also wait and just demo it. So. Um, it's your call. May I speak with my client? Sure, yeah. <clears throat> Want to take a break, five minutes? Yeah, so yeah, yeah we'll take a five minute recess, okay? Thank you. <clears throat>
just a guy dumping three or four hundred. Folks, if we could get back to it. I'll call the Danvers Zoning Board of Appeals back into session. Uh, Attorney McCann, what would you like to do? Well, I believe what we need to do is um, we would like to request to withdraw uh, without prejudice the request for a lot area variance, please. Okay, could I get a motion, please? So moved. I'll second. I have a motion to withdraw uh, 42 Summer Street uh, dimensional variance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. And as far as the special permit? Um, I would like to request a continuance okay. on the special permit application, please. Okay. And is the November date uh, what you're thinking of? What's that? 11 14. 14. Sure. 11 14. Yep. Okay, could I get a motion to continue okay? the special permit 11 14? I just Wait also a want to acknowledge that it's also the final. Sorry, day. too many people talking. Yes, it is. I just wanted to acknowledge that it's continuing the special permit and the finding. Yes, it's two pieces. It's, uh, yep. Attorney McCann, that date's good for you 11 14. Uh, 11 14, Brendan, does that work for you? Yeah. Okay, yes. Yes, please. Right, Can so I get a motion? Uh, I have a motion to continue. I'll second. And second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good. We'll see you on the 14th. Any see updates? Please, not on Saturday, the day before. <laughs> I will try not to. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time tonight. Yes, thank you. And a motion to adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn. Can I'll I get a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, Danvers. Good night, Danvers.